It's mid-September, and that means the grapes are in from California, and it's time to make wine. We're here in Hartford. We're down at the uh, produce market where we're going to shop for wine grapes. I think this year we're going to make Pinot Noir because it's a great food wine. It's a little light among the red wines, but it's delicious. Monday told me 26 on Monday. Boxes, each box is 36 pounds, about two and a half gallons a box. Okay, this is the most time-consuming part of the process of making wine. It gets easier from here on out, but what we're doing is taking all the grapes off, the, all the fruit off the stems, because the stems would make the wine very bitter and would ruin all these nice grapes we have here. So we're at the, about the limit of what you can do by hand. If we made any more than we make, which is 20 gallons of wine, we'd need to get some mechanical help. But once you get into mechanical help, it's like a, an incremental big jump up in terms of expense. And right now, labor's cheap. <laughs> Good. I didn't realize she was doing that. Yeah. I always do it. So they have to get all the soap off. <laughs> and then after that, you use that one towel and you step on that all the way to the grates. Clean, clean towel. And I come over here. It's ingenious. It's and then I start. And this is really cold. Good. Really cold. Okay, so then I have to That's the sound on there. make sure that these are all broken. And what I'll end up doing is I'll end up going from here to here to here. <laughs> and then back to here. Easy, easy. <laughs> easy, easy. Just take take your time. Now, also, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to add a little These are extra potassium oh, metabite sulfite to kill the naturally occurring yeast so that we can put in the yeast that we want so we can make sure we're going to get wine instead of who knows what, like vinegar or rather than take a chance and not knowing what might be in there. Yep. The problem is that the grapes have a lot of resistance yeah. and it really makes it an aerobic workout because yeah. they're trying to get out and you're trying to keep them down and the more they're pushing, the more they don't like it. Top on them like this, you can feel them squishing. So and then you have to get the guys that haven't been squished on the bottom. So you have to develop some kind of stirring technique. <laughs> And you should say parenthetically that for the next couple of days, I will not be able to be around regular people <laughs> because I will attract fruit flies and <laughs> everything, no matter how many showers I take. After the third day, I'm okay. <laughs> Well, it's been about 24 hours since we crushed our grapes and we added a little potassium metabisulfite to uh, kind of decimate the, the naturally occurring yeast because we want to nudge this down the, the path to, uh, to some good wine. So here's the way it looks. It's quiet, there's nothing happening here, which is what we should expect because we've, we've really reduced the yeast population. Uh, we're not manipulating this wine very much. Uh, this, is gonna, this is a natural product. 
This is now grape juice, but grape juice, like life, is ephemeral. It doesn't last long. It's going to turn, it wants to turn into something, whether it's going to be vinegar or wine, but it's not going to remain grape juice. Uh, that's just nature. So we're going to give it a nudge down the path to wine. Uh, there are a lot of other things you can manipulate here, like the acid level, but we're just trying to stay with the minimum uh, and just bring out the natural uh, product that the fruit wants to make. So next step is to add wine yeast. We're getting ready to uh, prepare the yeast to add to the uh, fermenters and this is virtually the same thing as if you were making bread. We've got uh, dry active yeast. The only difference is this one is specially developed for winemaking. So we're going to dissolve it in warm water just like the step you would do to make, to make bread. I want to get this up to about 95 degrees and uh, just a little water to dissolve it and that's the form that it will go into the, uh, the grape mix. It don't have to be precise but something close. Just like making bread, if you get the yeast, uh, the water too hot, you can kill the yeast. I want to be a little careful not to be too hot. Close enough. So we'll put about a quarter cup. Smells just like bread yeast. Okay. All right, we're adding our solution of yeast to this mixture. And we've got about uh, five gallons of wine that will come out of one of these vats and that's about the amount of yeast just enough to handle five gallons. So what happens is now we've added the yeast we want to work and it's gone into a medium where it's the dominant yeast so it's going to be the one to control uh, the chemical reactions here instead of um, the wild yeast which now is kind of at a low population so it uh, it's kind of overwhelmed by the good stuff. There's stuff we want to put in. We're going to do the rest of the vats too. Here's how things look two days after we put the yeast into the uh, crushed grapes. And we have a cap. This is called a cap. All the solids get pushed to the top from all the carbon dioxide that gets produced here. And this has to be broken up a couple of times a day so that uh, you don't form a, uh, a place where bacteria can form and spoil your, your wine. So this is done in every winery. Every winery has to do this in one form or another. And you can see all the bubbles from the fermentation. And one of the, one of the products of, of the fermentation is heat. And I can actually feel some heat coming off the surface here. So the temperatures will rise here. And in big wineries, they actually have to cool, uh, cool the mixture down so that it doesn't overheat and stop the uh, fermentation. Okay, the grapes have been crushed and they've been fermenting for six days now with all the skins and the seeds. So today's objective is to separate the solids from the liquids and uh, end up with wine. It's going to ferment a little longer in age. So here's the equipment we're going to use. A very simple press made out of uh, 
heavy plastic, something to catch the juice in. Uh, and the liquid is going to go into these five gallon carboys, which we set up in an elevated position so that we uh, later we, we need to drain these. We're going to siphon from them so we want them a little higher and we don't want to move them when they're full because five gallons is pretty heavy stuff and this is pretty fragile. So, uh, I guess I should say if we didn't know the pedigree of our grapes we'd be taking hydrometer readings uh, both before we did the crushing and at this point to see where we are on alcohol. But since we know these grapes uh, pedigree pretty well, they come from California, they've got to have a minimum amount of sugar in them to even ship to the wholesalers here. Uh, we really don't need to, uh, to do that. Uh, it's also kind of hard to take hydrometer readings with all the solids mixed in. So we're pretty sure we know where the wine is going. It's been fermenting at a pretty high rate. And uh, so now it's time to move off into the next step. Okay, uh, in the press, we're going to insert a, a, a mesh to, uh, to catch all of the, uh, all the solids are going to be trapped in here, and uh, just liquid is going to come out here. But uh, in the liquid, there's going to be a lot of suspended solids. So that's going to precipitate out once we get it in the, uh, in the jugs, and uh, we're going to siphon off the liquid and get rid of that amount of precipitates, which is quite a lot. So, we can get started. Take this one out. Yeah. The juice. Here's the juice. It's not very clear because it's still got a lot of uh, solids in it. But we're going to work all that out. Okay, here's what's remaining after we've pressed out all the juice. And uh, we've got a, a pretty weighty combination of, of uh, grape skins and seeds and all kinds of things. Uh, in Europe and in Italy, they would make, they would add a little water to this because there's still all alcohol in, in, in this as well. And they would add water to it and uh, distill it and make, uh, in Italy it's called grappa, uh, and in France it's called mark, but it's commonly done in all countries that make wine. In fact, I think in Italy it's required that uh, all the makers uh, produce grappa because that's a, that's a revenue source. So our government needs to get on board with that kind of upfront thinking. Today's October 6th and the wine has been uh, sitting in the carboys for two weeks. Two weeks ago, you recall, we pressed the, uh, the must, that is we separated the seeds and skins from the liquid and we put the liquid into these five gallon carboys and you can see what happened in two weeks. Uh, 
there were a lot of solids in the uh, suspended in the liquid and they precipitated out and we got a lot of sediment here. So what we want to do now is get this liquid off this sediment so we can avoid getting any kind of off flavors. There's all kinds of compounds in in this junk at the bottom. So that's basically all we're going to do today is, is siphon this stuff off so we don't disturb any of this. We'll leave it behind and we're going to let it settle again and uh, then we'll, and that's called racking and we're going to do that again in about a month. A little bit of SO2 smell oh, oh. which is what we expect but it smells, like it smells wine. good. It smells like wine. So that's a good sign. We expect a little SO2 at this point and now so it looks like wine, smells like wine now. It could be wine. Okay, here's our neat little siphon. That makes this job a lot easier. And at the bottom of this, we got a little spacer so that the bottom can stay above the, uh, above the sediment. So we're going to get it going. And then we're going to taste it. Make sure. See what we got. You got that? Yeah. Here we go. We plunge it down. Looks like a transfusion. Little. Got some of the sediment in there, but. Yeah, you can see it's a little cloudy. Hmm. You wanna get a glass and we'll see what we got? Yeah. Cloudy? Yeah. Yeah. Tastes good. That's good. Mm -hmm. It's decent. Yeah. This is going to work. It's been about five weeks since we last racked the wine. So, we're going to do another racking session today and uh, we hope that's going to be all we need to do until we bottle it. So again, when you rack wine, we're just removing the, uh, the liquid from the sediment and hoping to not disturb the sediment and leave it behind. What we need to do at this stage is, is set, up the, uh, set up the wine for its uh, long rest until next summer when we, uh, when we bottle it. And for that we need to add a little bit of potassium metabisulfite about a quarter of a teaspoon per five gallons to uh, uh, keep, it, keep it stable. And we're going to also add uh, a very small amount of uh, French oak chips. Uh, you don't want to taste any, any oak really, you want to taste the wine, but we've been using it traditionally in, in all of our recipes, so we're going to put like a tablespoon or, or so in, in each one of these uh, five gallon carboys. So we're going to doctor it up first and then put the wine in on top of it. So we want about uh, eh, roughly a quarter. All right, we're going to put just a, a little pinch of uh, something like this here, maybe, maybe two of these. Yeah. Try to get most of it into the into the jug. So the philosophy here is, you know, maybe this adds a little, a little nuance to the flavor. But uh, even when you buy commercial wine, sometimes California wines they overdo it with this stuff, and you, all you taste is oak. That's, I don't think that's the way to do it. Here we go. It's not as rich mm -hmm. as the uh, the Cabernet yeah. Merlot thing, so it's it's a little better for food, I think. Okay, what we have on on the jugs is a one-way valve uh, that's uh, configured like the trap in your sink. So in the U-shape, bottom of the U-shape is is a liquid, it's water, 
but we add uh, maybe a little pot potassium metabisulfite or, or alcohol to it so that it doesn't uh, grow organisms. But anyway, that allows any, any CO2 that gets generated in the wine to go out. It, it will bubble out, but nothing will go in. All right, one, one of the things we, we want to be careful about doing is we want to make sure this, this wine doesn't, doesn't have any contamination. Um, and one of the things you do there, uh, because this is going for many, many months before we bottle it, is we want to reduce the, um, the area exposed to the air during the time it's, it's going to you know, be, be stored away. So we want to get the surface of this wine up into this neck so that there's a very small uh, area that, that is in contact with the, uh, with the air. Now since we don't have a way to put a nitrogen atmosphere in there to, to keep it, uh, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to leave some behind here. That's inevitable because of the sediment. But we're going to want to add wine to each of these carboys to bring it up to that level. So uh, we would normally add wine that we had made in previous batches, but in this case we have a new grape that we haven't made before. We don't want to adulterate it with a different grape. So in fact we're going to use a, a commercial Pinot Noir to uh, do the little bit of uh, fill up that we need here. Well, we last visited our wine in November, and that's when we put it in the carboys to, to rest. And here it is, mid-July, and it's time to bottle it. And I'll tell you what, it's beautiful, and it tastes great. We should actually do this with candlelight instead, you know? I need to get some movable lights. <laughs> we can't see anything. Here, I'll tell you what. Let's do this first so we can get a shot. Let me get that out of the way. Beautiful, clear color. Now this device was actually a setup to put a filter in there, but uh, we decided that the filter, number one, took too long to get the liquid through, and number two, you lost a lot of flavor, and number three, it wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we just use it now as, a, as a, a nice way to dispense the wine into the bottles. But it's just a flow through. This is beautiful. It has that characteristic light red color of Pinot Noir. Leave a little room for the cork. There you have it. A beautiful bottle of Pinot Noir. Made in the cellars of Bloomfield. <laughs> okay, here's the corks. Just like the alto on a curve. Huh? Yeah. Vacuum pack with a little potassium metabisulfite. It compresses easier. It compresses a lot easier than that. Then we're going to give it a whirl. Alright. Feeling a bit? No. Tough one. Okay, we're going to try the other corker now. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Go, man. <clears throat> man. That's hard. That is rough, yeah. Um, maybe we should soak them. Try another one, and then um, think about soap. It's always an experiment on this cork and stuff. That's too hard. Yeah, that's, that's too hard. Yeah. Let's soak. Yeah, I don't think it's going to take much. Yeah. I'll put some canola oil on this one. Let's see that. Yeah. Here. Well, that's 
disappointing. Not bad. Good. See, these are shorter. Well, I've been... Yeah. Make sure you're down. There you go. go. Got it. More empty promises about course, huh? <laughs> <I'm> more. <laughs> it's a constant disappointment. It's probably funny that it's Larry's brother or something like that, yeah. or his cousin. What a disappointment. Yeah, we'll have to do something different next year. Yeah. I think we had easier times with other stuff, though. Yeah. But we soaked them more. I mean, we knew we had yeah. to soak them. All right, now that one ain't easy. There may be a variation in the diameter of these uh, bottles, too. Well, yeah, that too, I'm sure, but not that much. Yeah, looking is making a big difference. <clears throat> yeah. All right, that's a case. Yeah. All right, let's get the other one soaking too. Well, here's the reward for all the hard work that we put into making this wine beginning last September, and now it's mid-July, and we have this beautiful Pinot Noir that we're going to drink the first bottle right now. With the folks who made the wine. Salute. Salute to life. To hell. Well, we ended up with 98 bottles of wine. And uh, after some difficulties with corking and, and trying different methods. We, we got everything done as usual and now we're going to relax before we clean up because cleaning up is an important element. If you don't keep things immediately clean then it's almost impossible to clean it up later for next year. So we're already making plans for next September. And meanwhile we're just going to enjoy this lunch.